is The Chris Abraham Show. This is uh, the Chris Abraham Show, Season 5, Episode 11. This is all about my recent experience uh, taking a class to get my concealed carry permit certificate so that I could get my Virginia concealed carry again. And it was very interesting. And you might have some terrible background noise because I'm in a terrible place near a terrible road with a lot of traffic in a an echo chamber so maybe all the all the road noise will amplify into my space <clears throat> so uh two two saturdays ago i went into dc to attend maybe it was last saturday to it it was last saturday into dc to attend this place called dc security associates and they're the well they're not the only group but uh, i got a hold of them because i was at um, nova armory and i think they have a relationship with dc security associates so i signed up it's 125 dollars to get the training required to apply for a concealed carry permit for virginia um you can pay 200 or 250 uh, for the Maryland and 250 for the Virginia. 175 for I think for Dece for Virginia concealed carry, and um, spent five or six hours there. It was really interesting and it was very shocking, right? Because I'm not around that many gun people, and uh, the laws have changed a lot back. Uh, Almost uh, 10 years ago, maybe, when I got my concealed carry permit, um, it was illegal to get a Maryland uh, or DC um, CCW. The concealed carry group was pretty much, um, you had to prove that you needed a concealed carry permit. And that proof was required a lot on whether or not the sheriff liked you and whether you can prove that you've been attacked in the past or that you work with money or that you transport diamonds or whatever. And now, because of the lawsuits resulting uh, that have happened in, at the uh, federal federal lawsuits and even uh, Supreme Court lawsuits, Second Amendment lawsuits against these supposedly unconstitutional bans and restrictions on the ownership of firearms. Now, as a Virginia resident or as a non-resident of D.C. And, and Maryland, all I need to do is take these classes and apply and a couple other things maybe and within, you know, six months I have the, I'd have the right to carry or conceal carry uh, in Maryland and D.C. as well. Now, D.C. is no restriction, right? You can carry a high-capacity firearm, uh, carry a 33 or 50 or 100-round drum attached to it, have 50 magazines on your person, have a capacity, a native capacity of 17 or 18 or 19 or 20 rounds, be able to run one in the chamber, and uh, and that's fine. But in D.C. and Maryland, the laws are completely different. Sorry, that's a uh, Black Hawk. Looks like a Hind, but I don't think there's any Russian Hinds going around D.C., Virginia airspace. So, 
So, like, in Maryland and D.C., the laws are completely different. For example, uh, in order to carry in D.C., let's say I had my Glock 17, that's 17 in the magazine and one in the chamber, and I was carrying it into D.C. I couldn't legally carry it into D.C. unless I had a native... I can only carry or possess, concealed carry, a gun with a 10-round magazine. Uh, And that's 10 rounds total. So let's say I had a Glock 26 or a Glock 48 or a Glock 43X, and my magazine had a capacity of 10 rounds. Let's say I, I concealed carry concealed carried it with one round in the chamber so that would mean that if i had 10 rounds in the magazine one round in the chamber that would be a total of 11 rounds which is not legal so i would need to make sure that i had basically filled my magazine with the 10 round limit or the 10 round pin you literally need to buy uh, California magazines that are that are pinned, or Canada magazines, Canadian magazines, or whatever, that Massachusetts magazines that are pinned and made permanently ten rounds. So if I had my Glock 17, I would have a ten round magazine that fit into the 17 round uh, magazine well. And if I had my Glock 19, I would have a ten round magazine. And the other, um, uh, the other th- fifteen rounds, the, the other five rounds would be blocked from being able to use. Right. So, if I had a Glock twenty three, which has thirteen rounds, I think um, the the magazine would only allow you to load ten. And it would be a permanent thing, not a pin thing, but it would need to be um, manufactured that way. So, so the same thing with Maryland. The difference between D.C. and Maryland is that in D.C. you can have um, an infinite number of 10-round magazines on your person. So you could have a, let's say, a Glock 26 let me say a Glock 27, because a Glock 27 has 9 plus 1. So if you had a Glock 27, you would have a 9-round magazine in one of the chambers, so that's 10. And then you can carry um, 100 more 9-round uh, uh, forty caliber magazines in your, um, in your duffel bag. Let's say you have a Glock 26, which has a 10-round capacity, you can carry bags full of 10-round magazines filled with 9mm um, jacketed hollow points in a duffel bag, and you could um, do tactical reloads all you want and have an infinite number of magazines. And in that case, when you run out of a magazine, you have the 10 rounds in there, and when you uh, close the slide... Uh, it would take one of those uh, bullets with it, so you would have a total of 9 plus 1. So maybe a Glock 26 or a Glock 48 or a Glock 43X is a good decision, or a Glock 43, which is fewer. Anyway, um, but in Maryland, you're only allowed to carry... It's either... It's two magazines, I think. One in your one in your magazine well of your pistol and one in your pocket i do only i think you're only allowed to have two i don't think it is the one in your um magazine well and two backups i think it might be two total correct me if i'm wrong so as with anything even though i believe that the Um, gun laws in Virginia seem to be getting tighter and tighter and it seems to me that um, the sheriff's department and the public prosecutor and the um, uh, and the um, assistant uh, 
the AG, I don't know, whatever it's called, the public prosecutor, I be, um, the rumor has it that they have it in for people who own guns and they want to make their career on gun crime. But I'm told that uh, if you follow your P's and Q's, if you do everything right, but this guy was pretty awesome. We didn't get to do any range time. Uh, there are no ranges in uh, outside of the FBI. I don't think there are any ranges in D.C. that are open to the public. So we went into his simulator room and spent the next two hours uh, playing video games with uh, laser-equipped uh, Glocks. And I dare say he said that it was a $48,000 system. But the, um, the screen was really low refresh rate, so the experience was pretty terrible. But the thing that blew my mind away is I hit, every, I hit everything perfectly. Like, I, I had extremely good times. And the only reason that's true is because I just lined up my sights. I lined up my sights. We were only 10 uh, yards from the screen. If you line up your sights and you hit and you press the trigger, you're going to hit what you're going to hit. Uh, you don't even need in that situation to breathe special or anything like that. You're not doing a long range type of sniper attempt at getting something, you know, 50 yards away. It's right there in front of you in super size. And you'd be surprised nobody did that. Um, there was one guy, old guy, looked like he could have been in Vietnam, who was completely holding the firearm like he's choking a chicken. Um, he says that he's airborne. He says that he's Army airborne. But there's no way, since he was bragging about 1911, and 1911s like to bite. They like to... Um, uh, there's, uh, you know, slide and hammer bite in 1911s all the time. That's why they have such big, uh, uh, what are they called? Anyway, the point is, is that there were so many people who were just so terrible and they couldn't hit the side of a, you know, they couldn't hit the side of a barn even with, uh, with a fake gun, you know, without, without any of the recoil without any of the bang, without any of the smells and bells. Honestly, I mean, and to say nothing of what um, my buddy Keith always tells me, which is no matter how much training you have and no matter how active or exciting the situation, it's an entirely different thing when they start shooting back. So there was no bang, there was no boom, there was no uh, kick. There was no spent casings. There was no casings down your shirt. Uh, it was just a, a screen, a laser. And even so, people weren't looking over the... They were not... He should have maybe spent more time talking about aligning uh, the, uh, the front post with the... Uh, with the... Um, uh, with the rear uh, posts what is it called the rear notch with the front post he should have talked about focusing on the front post he should have talked about uh, shooting with your eyes open he should have talked about pressing uh, he should have talked about all those things he did rigorously and aggressively talk to us about making sure that we're doing proper um, the proper holding of a, of a of an autoloader you know, uh, thumbs forward, both thumbs forward, and, uh, you know, no teacupping, no crazy old FBI stuff. He didn't talk about, um, uh, I saw Celeste triangle. He didn't talk about leaning forward. He didn't talk about, um, shoulder length legs. He, he talked about having, um, your, uh, I guess your weak leg forward, your strong leg forward. Anyway, um, people had a lot of practice, but uh, there was not any real focus on, on bullseye. 
you know what I mean, on making sure that there was a proper alignment of, of the of the sights and that you were hitting what you were trying to fire at. And because the game was so much like a video game, people were uh, shooting like crazy, not caring at all about the um, uh, number of rounds that they were shooting. Um, it was sort of like playing the game Recon, where you roll you roll your dice uh, while you're shooting, and then um, if you roll a certain number, then your gun runs out of ammo, ammo or jams. That's basically the way it worked. Like when the gun stopped working, uh, you had to uh, either change mags or you had to um, you had to uh, uh, tap it and rack it. So. So I guess it did build a little bit of familiarity. It did build a little bit of positive experience. Here comes a uh, an emergency ambulance. And here comes a fire truck. Hope it's not my apartment. So anyway, it was pretty exciting, pretty fun. Made me sad how bad people were, how uninterested um, people are in being excellent. Uh, there was a woman who brought her young child there and he seemed to be autistic or on the spectrum. And uh, I really feel like he was allowed to be so casual with the firearm that he might, you know, disassociate and think that guns are basically video games. Um, he didn't have the experience of dealing with a loud thing going kaboom in his hands. Um, DC Security Associates, I think is what they're called. If you go to NovaArms.com, you can sign up there. Like, I, I eventually might do DC and Maryland, but I didn't have an extra $500 I wanted to spend on that. And plus, who knows how much money it costs to apply and so forth. And, you know, I don't even know if I really want to carry. Uh, I just want to know that it's legal if I want to leave the apartment with it or whatever. Like, it's sort of more of a, I don't have a car, but I want, uh, you know, I want a license kind of deal. Um, really tempted by that 40, uh, the G48 or the G43X. They're, uh, they're slimmer. And, you know, having a Glock 19, right, it doesn't really matter. It's not a good idea to have the extra five four or five rounds right like might as well get something that's native 10 round like a glock 26 or a glock 48 or a glock 43x where the um the magazine is 10 rounds so i never have to worry about crossing into dc accidentally and uh and think realizing that i've got a, a 17 or a 15 round magazine with me and that it's basically like not having a concealed carry permit for... It's better to go ahead and equip myself for the lowest common denominator than it is to always have to be worried about the various and sundry state lines. Anyway, uh, haven't been to the range in years. Um, don't even know why I care about guns anymore. Don't carry. Don't play. It's not even my hobby. So... But it was fun. It was a fun afternoon. It was a fun uh, day. Like, um, I have to understand that I've been doing this for over, you know, for uh, over uh, 10 years, like 12, 13 years now. I've been a gun guy. So, like, when he asked people to come up to, to break down the Glock and the MMP. I was really easy, really quick, could have done it with my eyes closed. You know, I'm just, I've got a certain level of muscle memory and expertise by now. And so I shouldn't have been ragging on anybody. I'm sure I wasn't a, a good shot when I started. So 
Anyway, uh, what about you? Do you guys shoot? Do you hate guns? Do you love guns? Do you love your Second Amendment? Do you consider it to be constitutional? Are you... Uh, uh, do you believe the Second Amendment is all about hunting and fishing and or hunting and, and self-defense at home? Or do you believe that uh, the Second Amendment is about defending against tyranny? What do you think about black guns as in ARs and a- AR-15s and AKs? What do you think about um, pistol, uh, rifle caliber, caliber pistols? What do you think about the gun brace? All these kinds of things. What do you think about the arbitrary number of 10 rounds? Do you think that there are going to be... um, What do you think about permitless carry called constitutional carry? What do you think about the fact that as of um, 1981, only Vermont had constitutional permitless carry? And now in 2023, I believe there's 26 or 27 out of 50 states that do not require you to have any additional permit uh, in order to carry concealed a firearm what do you think about that what do you think about the future do you think that there's going to be a ban on high capacity magazines high capacity firearms do you think there's going to be a ban against ammunition do you think that uh, there's going to be a ban against um, high capacity firearms high capacity magazines do you believe there's going to be a ban against um, semi-automatic rifles, or do you think it's going to be only focused on AR-15s and its variants and a, uh, AK-47 type 7 by 62 by 39 millimeter type of Russian type of scary-looking uh, communist firearms? I'd love to hear back from you guys. Anyway, I, I know you probably can't hear this at all, but I love you, and I'll talk to you soon. And this is Season 5, Episode 11 of The Chris Abraham Show. Blah, 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 Uh, before this episode starts, I'm going to come up with some things about uh, D.C. concealed carry gun law in Maryland and D.C. since I don't know those things. And then maybe I'll mention some stuff about Virginia gun law. So is Maryland a shall issue concealed carry state? Maryland is now a shall issue state since the Supreme Court's ruling on the New York uh, state um, RPA NYSRPA, I think it's like um, Rifle and Pistol Association or something like that, versus Bruin case on June 23rd, 2022. Concealed weapon permits are issued at the state level by the Secretary of the Maryland State Police. I think the same thing is that um, both D.C. and Maryland are now shall issue states, which is to say that if you apply for them, and you have all the paperwork and the background check and you've included your fee, the um, the sheriff, uh, the state police, secretary, etc. must give you a concealed carry license. Um, Washington, D.C. does not honor CCW licenses for many state or subdivision in the United States, so there's no reciprocity. Is Washington, D.C. a CCW state carrying firearms? In general, you must be licensed to carry a firearm in the district concealed, while open carry is prohibited. However, there are exceptions for legally registered firearms. Um, Is it hard to get a concealed carry permit in D.C.? There is a rigorous application process that requires the applicant to fill out a lengthy application. The applicant application must get fingerprinted by the MPD, the Metro Police Department. The applicant must further declare under penalty of perjury that he or she is not prohibited under federal district or D.C. uh, district law from possessing a firearm. Can I carry a gun in Maryland now. Open carry is legal in Maryland only for uh, 
Maryland wear carry handgun permit, WCHP holders. In order to obtain a WHCP, applicants must be at least 21 years old and must show a good and substantial reason to carry a handgun. I don't think that's the, I don't think that's true anymore. Otherwise, this class wouldn't be popular. Um, can I bring my gun in DC? Assuming the gun holder's registration and permits are in order, the following steps must be taken to legally travel with a firearm in DC. The gun must be unloaded, the ammunition and the firearm should be stored separately. Uh, the firearm should be in a locked container. Also, you're not allowed to stop, I don't think. Um, how long does it take to conceal carry in DC? The application fee is $75 and the fingerprint fee is $35. This is payable at the time you make an application. The process can take up to 90 days. Do I have to register my gun in D.C.? A person must obtain a registration certificate prior to taking possession of a firearm from a licensed dealer or from any person or organization holding a registration certificate of the firearm. Can I carry more than 10 rounds in Maryland? Among the questions... Uh, most frequently encountered are, can I keep magazines capable of holding more than 10 rounds? Or can I carry a magazine that holds more than 10? Maryland law does not prohibit the possession of a magazine with the capacity of more than 10 rounds. I don't know if that's true either. What are the new gun laws in Maryland 2023? The Maryland Senate passed the Controversial Gun Safety Act of 2023, which limits the circumstances where someone can carry a weapon even with a concealed carry permit. On Monday evening, following a spirited debate, um, I think that that's it. Uh, let me see about Virginia. Virginia is a shall issue state. For residents, applications are filed. Uh, with the circuit court in their county of residence, and non-residents must mail their application to the state police. Will Virginia become a constitutional carry state? The 2023 Virginia legis legislative session has begun, and to mark the occasion, Virginia Delegate Marie March, House District 7, has introduced the Constitutional Carry HB 1393, a bill authorizing the carrying of concealed handguns without a permit within the Commonwealth of Virginia. That would be great. What does shall issue mean? Shall issue, uh, often referred to as a presumptive right to carry law, require authorities to provide a license to any applicant who meets specified criteria. What do Virginia concealed carry need fingerprints? Do Virginia concealed carry need fingerprints? Uh, a complete set of fingerprints on a Virginia State Police fingerprint card. I got the fingerprint card, but I also got uh, Arlington police actually scan your hands with magic lasers. Constitu constitutional carry in Virginia. Constitutional carry means that the state lo state's law does not prohibit of citizens who can legally possess a firearm from carrying handguns openly and or in a concealed manner. Thus, no state permit is required. Um... Let's see. Why do people conceal carry? CCW is often practiced as a means of self-defense. Every state in the United States allows for concealed carry of a handgun, either permitless or with a permit, although the difficulty in obtaining a permit varies per jurisdiction. And that's it, I guess. I'm going to put this at the end after the entire episode. So, um, should I carry my gun every day? The USCCA strongly endorses everyday carry, carrying a defensive firearm whenever and wherever it is legal and practical to do so. What is the number one rule of firearms? Always keep the gun pointed in a safe direction. Uh, what is 333 gun rule? The 333 in the name is a reference to a firearm rule of three. Most self-defense scenarios take place within three yards with three shots fired in under three seconds. Uh, what is the 21-foot gun rule? Officers use it to explain why they shot at someone. Prosecutors, including in Utah, 
point to it when deciding if a police shooting was legal. It's called the 21 foot rule. And it means that if someone with a knife running towards police could cover about 21 feet before the officer unholsters his gun and fires. Um, how many rounds is ideal for CCW? While a 10 round capacity is our minimum recommendation, there are a few reasons why you may want to choose a firearm with even more capacity. Like I said, um, in Maryland and DC, you can't carry more than 10 rounds. So it's tempting for me to get a nine plus one or a 10 round magazine firearm. Although I have a car CM nine, which has, I believe seven plus one or eight plus one. And that might just be the sweet spot. So anyway, I hope this was useful and helpful. Um, What is, uh, I want to know difference between will carry and shall carry. The difference is subtle, but what the, the important to note is that both will and shall are used with all verbs to form the future tense. Um, frick. Let's see. As a general rule, use of will for affirmative and negative. Damn you. Bugga, bugga, bugga. Bugga, 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 bugga. I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, uh, I will uh, let you go now. Talk to you soon. I hope this was useful. Uh, things were really different uh, 10 years ago, so it's really important to bone up on these things. Bye-bye. Oh, thank you. for listening to the chris abraham show make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes until next time